Okay, now normally I usually have me talking in front of the camera, but it's been weird the last little while. I don't know, my camera's not been working the last few days, and I just don't have the time to deal with it because I just... Okay, my original thoughts on this season were it had issues, but it still had some good parts. And that's not still untrue. There were some decent elements that were introduced into season four that did shine amongst the very random and very sloppy kind of storytelling. Uh, Sister Sage, I liked her in this. I thought that she added a cool element of the idea of the smartest person on the planet is just so sick and tired of of dumb people that she would want to watch it burn um, and that she's just continually playing everyone. Um, I did like A-Train's uh, storyline in this. I thought he had a great arc with what was going on with him after seeing this character be such a piece of garbage for so long and to see him slowly start to develop some humility. That was great to see. I very much enjoyed that. Uh, Huey's dad, like Simon Pegg, I was not expecting him to be ever relevant in this show, and he had actually a pretty good season in this. Um, Ryan, I thought Ryan was pretty good, maybe a little bit uh sometimes, but you're trying to have this morality battle with a kid who has lived a sheltered falsehood of a life up until recently, and then his dad comes into the picture, who's basically Superman in his eyes, but also a maniacal monster. But he's doing it in a way that is convincing Ryan ever so slightly. And then you've got Butcher, who has been an asshole to Ryan for so long that, you know, it's great that he's trying to make up for it now. But at the same time, there is some conflictions there. So there were certain parts of that that I thought were OK, and there was others that I thought weren't. Butcher is kind of where it begins to go a bit weird for me because, and Moist Critical actually made a really good point about this, I never felt any kind of threat for any of the main characters, and Butcher was kind of the big catalyst of it. He, he keeps on saying he's going to die from sickness, but you, you just know he won't. Um, You know he's going to make it all the way to the end. Uh, and there were some parts that were kind of cool. I'll admit, though, the whole Jeffrey Dean Morgan thing, I, I wasn't a surprise to me. So I'm eh, about that one. But I thought that Carl Urban did the best with what he could. But at the same time, I just feel like a lot of the dialogue, both with him and just kind of the shock humor value of this show, was almost delving into older seasons of Game of Thrones where if they didn't really know how to write themselves out of a conversation or if they were almost on the precipice of writing something that was too smart for D&D, they'd just make a cock joke. And I feel like that happened a lot with Butcher and it reflected in everyone else in the show. Um, but a little bit more on that later. The other one leading into Huey, um, kind of, again, going on the whole thing of just not really feeling any threat for the characters was... I never, I, Huey should have died like six times this season, but after the first element where he's like an event and Homelander should have killed him, after that element, I'm like, man, if he, he got away from that, I, I don't know if he'll ever, I'll ever feel threat for this character again. And yeah, I don't know. Like, the whole thing with Huey too, that whole thing with the sexual assault stuff that happened to him, that was, that was them pushing the line a little too far far I think I believe that they were they were delving into um South Park territory but obviously the distinction between the boys and South Park is that it's a cartoon because one of the episode I can think of immediately is watch <laughs> the Indiana Jones one where Steven Spielberg and and uh George Lucas are constantly sexually assaulting Indiana Jones and that's like, that was a pretty dark joke at that time. And I still thought it was funny, but it was pretty dark. In this one, it just felt like they were trying to do it for the sake of a shock humor and rather than actual the story progression. And, and, and that brings me back to the whole story of season four. I felt this was such a sloppy um, pre-finale season 
in comparison to others I've seen. Like, obviously, the big um, comparison I'm going to make, because Eric Kripke was the creator of that show as well, uh, season four of Supernatural is almost the best season of that show. Um, obviously, there's differing opinions on it, but it did a great job building up season five. Season four of The Boys did not do a good job of building up to season five. The last episode did, sure, but everything leading up to it was full of so much unnecessary drama that it 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 didn't need to exist. The whole thing with Frenchie. Now, I'm not going to go into like the, the the idiocy of how some people were getting upset that he was with a guy. It's like we've known he's bi since the get go. So all of you are just like your homophobia is showing. But if you're talking about how random of a storyline that was, yes, you could absolutely say that because that was just such a pointless story in the end. Because if you wrap up what Frenchie has, he has this relationship with this guy who, for some reason, he killed their family. You never really told why. He missed that. He feels guilty about it. He he turns himself in, but then he's let go from jail. And then by the end of the season, he is exactly where he started at the beginning of this season. Except him and Kimiko, like, take that one step. Like, this whole season was a plastering of dumb drama bullshit between those two just so you could have their relationship take one step further at the end of it. You did not need to sit through eight episodes of shit for that very poorly devised story element. Um, and then speaking of other people having drama, uh, Mother's Milk, I, I'll, I'll give the actor one thing. He should he should grow the goatee back. I, I, I'm hoping he's okay because he, he kind of looked a little ill in this season without that goatee. But he also kind of just had drama for drama's sake. Like he had a heart attack or a panic attack while on a mission. And I mean, I kind of guess, sure, but it felt so thrown in. And that was what a lot of this season felt like. A lot of ideas were just thrown together. And instead of, you know, actually being like written well into it, it's just more so like, oh, why don't we add this? Oh, why don't we add this? It really felt like a first draft. It never actually felt like this was something that was planned. It felt, it, it just felt so different in comparison to the quality of writing from the last three seasons. However, you could say that the ending of season three did slum somewhat take a dive into dum dumbness with how D Maeve should have died. She should have died. And how Butcher was like, yeah, you know what? Maybe like this whole plan we got here, that could have done been done a little better. But otherwise, season three was still pretty good. And then this season is just, oh, I, again, I'm not going to say that there wasn't any good to this. Like there was, there was some good, probably one of my favorite elements or story elements ever with A-Train happened. And it was like a 10 second clip, I think in the sixth episode. One of the best things that ever happened to his character. Homelander had some interesting moments. Like, obviously, just this guy losing his fabric on reality. While, yes, some people really like the episode where he goes to the scientist lab and just basically takes out his frustration on all these people who are part of his creation, it really didn't lead up to anything. It just showed that he's maniacal, but we've already known that. Anthony Starr did a fantastic job with it. Not going to deny that at all. I just... Felt like when it came to the end of it, I was like, okay, we already knew he was here. So you just did this to make it more disturbing, I guess. Kind of just to somewhat establish that he's really going to do the things he's going to do. But, and they really tried so hard to do the shock value. Not to say that some of it wasn't funny. Like, I know everyone's talked about the sauna scene. I thought it was hilarious. Like, everything about that was just so disgusting but so funny but i it just felt like a lot of stuff was here to i'm not going to say push an agenda but definitely push buttons and be so on the nose it was almost nauseating obviously with a show like this you're going to have an escalation of the intensity and the insanity of the events following around it the first season was a really good introduction to it trying to like slowly taking off that mask of what makes 
superheroes who they are and actually shows the assholes that they are. And every season that's progressively gotten a little bit more intense, a little bit more insane, a little bit more into that debauchery zone. But then by this one, it got a bit much. It felt like it was more leaning into the shock rather than the story. And obviously, I'm not going to say it's easy. You're going to have a fine, like the line of like adding these two, these elements together into a good story is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner as you go along. Or season five, it's going to be a fucking, like, a floss needle. So thin to get it right. And I really, really hope they do. Because this season just felt so messy. And it felt like there were so many moments where it just felt very slapped together. The whole bit with Butcher somehow chopping this Doc's legs off, his Doc's leg off, carrying him a distance... And then coming back to the group, all the while being deathly ill, are the fact that um, there's a scene that involves a Starlight coming to save these guys in this super deep, dark bunker. And I remember being like, how did you find them? And then they asked the question like, oh, yeah, how did you find us? Find my phone. Are, are you fucking kidding me? Are you telling me that a cell phone app? was able to find some people in an incredibly secure bunker. If that's the case, then how on earth are you ever going to get anything? For, like, how are you ever going to be safe from Homelander at this point? It, it just, like, a fucking phone app? Are you kidding me? It really did feel like they had the idea of how they wanted to end it, but they didn't know how to get there, and they just kind of put it together as they went along. That's the best way I can describe it. It really feels like a first draft it did not feel cohesive through a good point of it there's a lot of episodes you could skip and you would essentially miss nothing there was still some good there was still some good not going to deny that at all but this is by far the weakest season of the boys from a story perspective so in the end i'm going to give season i'm going to give season uh, four of the boys a generous three out of seven it's not a two because i was still entertained and that finale was really good but by god it it really needs to take a step up if we're going to go into the finale and what's crazy too is the finale sorry when i mean the final season the finale episode of season four was directed by eric kripke eric hasn't directed anything since supernatural he he directed the if he yeah i believe he directed the season finale of season four so he was trying to do kind of a similar thing here i I don't know there was also a couple of things that bob singer did in the finale that unless you were a supernatural follower you would not get the joke like it was so on the nose i i mean i just don't i don't know it's just like you guys because sometimes like yeah you can have some great ideas but sometimes those ideas have consequences and sometimes they just don't work no matter how good you think they might be you still need to temper it so like i said i'm just hoping that they do it better with the fight with season five i am looking forward to it but nowhere near as much as i would originally i feel like all of the gusto i got from gen v because i that show yeah had issues but it was still really well done i feel like all of the good writing in that season was there and none of it was put into season four that that's that's a good way to say it anyways guys those are my thoughts about it sorry for not being in front of the camera but like i said camera stuff is just acting up weird right now give me your guys' thoughts very curious to what you guys think of this season um yeah what do you think of it uh did you like it did you not what were some things you think they could have done better uh better what what do you think is you think you they did really well let me know. Let's start a discussion. Anyways, that's all for me. This is the last time I'm going to try and talk about it. I've tried to do like four videos today and I just couldn't, couldn't get the camera working. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? Let's just, let's just have a voice and a photo of Homelander here being all nutty. And yeah, that'll do it. Anyways, that's all for me, guys. Talk to you later.